Hi everybody, Mark Oman with MD Web Pro here for another Whiteboard Wednesday. And today for our Whiteboard Wednesday, we're gonna talk about something. It's uh, a concept that's it's not a new idea in web marketing, but it's an idea that's gained a lot of traction in the last couple of years, especially with uh, the uh, prominence of social media, uh, some social media channels today. So today what we're gonna talk about is content marketing and how a content marketing strategy uh, should be be part of any web strategy for any business that wants to promote themselves online, especially for medical practices. Uh, so today we're going to go through what is a content strategy, why would we want to use content marketing, and then finally how, how do we execute a, an effective content marketing campaign. So to start off, what exactly is content marketing? Well, a quick, a quick definition is it's a publishing targeted content with the goal of driving targeted traffic to your site. Now you can see we have a targeted content and traffic to your site underlined. The reason for this is we don't simply want to publish content out to the web without knowing why we're publishing it or who it's for. Uh, there's many mechanisms for finding out what is targeted content. Uh, primarily what goes into determining uh, quality content for your site is listening to the, to the uh, social channels out there to see what is being discussed monitoring keywords and keyword trends, search trends, uh, using some common tools such as Uber Suggest or the Google AdWords API or our, our own tools uh, to find out what's being searched for today, where are the traffic levels at so we can publish content to satisfy those search requests and bring people back through to your site. Uh, and also monitoring social media, what's the topic, what's being discussed right now, what topics are trending in your area, uh, we can publish content based on those topics and uh, see immediate traffic increases relevant to your site. Now the reason that we keep seeing your site is we do want to publish content to your own site. We don't want to, the focus of all your content should be your own site. We don't want to focus on other sites or other platforms. Uh, publishing articles to article base, uh, article, um, article directories is an is a okay concept, but that's not our primary goal. Uh, publishing content out to Facebook is a, is a secondary goal to publishing the content first on your own site using Facebook and Twitter and other social media channels as a, as a channel, a mechanism to bring traffic back to your site is the real goal. So we want to keep the content published on your site. One common uh, question that comes up in that area is do I, do I set up a site on blogger.com or wordpress.com? Uh, and host a site there because it's cheap, it's easy to do, it gets you up and running quickly. And the real answer is no, you don't. Uh, basically, all your content marketing, all your, uh, all your, all the content, all your marketing, uh, then is promoting a site that you don't own. Um, if you ever want to move that site in the future, you don't own the domain. You can't do it. You can't do anything with the domain. So you really wanna, you really wanna create your own domain, your own site, and you wanna focus your content marketing on increasing the authority of that site and driving traffic to your own properties. So why content marketing? Why would anyone want to go down this, this avenue? Uh, we send out postcards, we do direct mail, we, we make phone calls, that's how we, how we do marketing. And one of the biggest advantages to marketing online is the concept of inbound marketing versus outbound marketing. Your traditional marketing mechanisms such as uh, telemarketing, billboards, uh, postcards, that's what we would call outbound marketing, where we're sending out blasts, we're, we're trying to get as many eyeballs as possible, we're running a TV spot. We don't know if those people have any interest in our product or service, but we know that you know, 100,000 cars a day drive by this billboard, it can't be bad, right? Well, those types of marketing tend to cost a lot more, be hard to track, uh, and, and not quite as effective. On the web, we have the opportunity for what's called inbound marketing. Now, not a, again, not a new concept, but a, a term that's uh, gained a lot of traction in the, in the last couple of years and dovetails beautifully with a content marketing strategy. The idea of inbound marketing is you want to present your company, your, your clinic, your services to a person when they're interested in your product or services. How does that happen? It's primarily through uh, Google search. People search for your products and services. We want your listing to come up in the search results. People are talking about your product and services on Twitter. We want you to have a presence on Twitter so that you can chime in on the conversation. Uh, same thing on Facebook. They're talking about your product or services. They've liked your page. We want you to have a presence there so that you can capture some of that, uh, 
some of that traffic. And that in in actuality, that's one of the biggest differences about marketing online is the ability to actually know when they're interested in your product or services. So why content marketing? Again, today in marketing online, it's really required. Uh, there's not a whole lot you can do successfully online without having quality content on your site. Content drives everything. It drives search engine optimization. It drives your email campaigns. It drives your social media. And it even drives your pay-per-click. What we've seen in each of these channels, if customers try to spend money on any one of them without having a solid content strategy behind them, they end up throwing money away. The reasons for that is you can, you can put out a great pay-per-click budget uh, and get a lot of high, high bounce rates because your site doesn't have content to keep people on the site or it doesn't have the correct call to actions to get them to sign up for email campaigns and email campaigns are driven by quality content. No one wants to receive an email that doesn't have uh, something of meaning inside of it. So all of these uh, traditional online marketing channels are powered by the hub, which is your website, and the content which is being published to your site. Another reason why content marketing, it's actually fun, it's engaging. You get to learn a lot about your customers, what they're thinking about, what they're talking about, what are the trends, which, which topics are getting traction. Uh, it really puts you in the middle of the conversation. Uh, it builds relationships, believe it or not. You can build relationships online with customers. Uh, we've heard from many doctors through their social media, through, through Twitter, uh, where patients are coming into their office and they already know the doctor because they've seen them on Twitter. They've seen their videos on their blog. They've communicated with them, but they've never met them face to face until they come into the practice. So there's a great opportunity to engage your prospects through a content strategy and the channels for pushing out that content. So how do we do all this? Well, a big, a big chunk to understanding how to effectively implement a content strategy is changing your thought process about your website. Traditionally, many clinics, uh, especially plastic surgeons, have set up websites where the site might be 60 pages of content and it stays that size for a number of years. Maybe you add a page, maybe you add a special here or there, but for the most part, the site stays the same size. In essence, the site becomes an ad. We're gonna talk about all our products and services and how to get customers through the door on our website. And that's the primary goal of the site. That is a dead concept. Uh, the site that stays static, the site with 60 pages that doesn't add content, is not going to get the traffic from search engine optimization or email or social that a site uh, that's engaged in a conversation will. So what's it mean when a site isn't an ad anymore? The site becomes the conversation. What that means is as we talked about, we're monitoring the conversations online, the site becomes your central hub. So what's happening on Facebook? What's happening on Twitter? What's happening in your email campaigns? On LinkedIn? On YouTube? All of those come back to your site. You're using the content from those channels, the conversations that are happening, the, the conversations on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube, and you're repurposing them back on your website so that you're the website is actually becoming reactive to what your community is seeing about your products and services. It's becoming part of the conversation. What that's going to do is create high visitor engagement. Uh, you're going to get more people linking to your site. You're going to get people commenting on your site. You're going to get people sharing the information from your site. Nobody's going to share an ad. People are going to share informative and engaging content. In the end, what that means is a, pay a site that was traditionally 60 pages is now after a year or two, it's going to become 1,000 pages. Five years down the road, you might have 5,000 pages on your website. Having all those pages targeting content, focus on targeted content, is going to drive your search engine optimization. You're going to start to see many, many more visitors through many, many more keywords from an effective content strategy and growing your site from 60 pages up to many thousands. That doesn't happen overnight, and it shouldn't. This happens through a consistent plan for publishing this targeted content out to your site. What you'll see here is a, a site with 60 pages might receive you know, uh, 500 to 1,000 keywords sending traffic to that site in any given month. A site with 10,000 with 1,000 pages is going to see 10,000 keywords driving traffic. 
You're going to hit the long tail search much better. You're going to rank for keyword terms before people even search for them. What that means is you're going to have the content there before someone actually produces the search. So you're not trying to chase search results, but you're actually, actually being proactive and placing content there before people search. Google says 20% of the searches uh, searched for on Google.com every day have never been searched for before. That's a huge opportunity, and the only way to capitalize on that opportunity is to have the content on your site before the people search. So how do we do this? Uh, we monitor conversations like we've been talking about. We're monitoring keywords. What are people searching for on Google? We're using the keyword suggestion tools. We're monitoring our analytics to see how people are coming through to our site. And we're monitoring the trends on social media. And we're being a part of the conversation. Uh, that last element is critical. We're a part of the conversation. We're engaging the people who do come to our site. We're monitoring them. And we're creating conversations with them. We're getting them to participate in our content. In a nutshell, we end up publish, publish, publish. We want content on the site. Um, if publishing one article a day sounds like a lot, well, for a lot of clinics it is, uh, but you really, there's no, there's no upper end to the amount that should be published uh, when it's quality and targeted content. Uh, you could effectively publish five articles per day. What needs to happen? It doesn't matter what, what number we start with. We just want to put a system in place so it's consistent. Some clinics, it may be two or three articles per month or per week, but we want to be consistent. Consistency is what gets us to thousands of pages, which gets us, gets us to many thousands of keywords sending traffic and gets us involved in all these social conversations. And then finally, we want to review and repurpose the content. Con you, it's not the idea that you publish content out there. It sits, we forget it, we move on. We want to always be reviewing which content is working which content isn't? How can we update content to get it working better? What's our bounce rate for that page? What's our bounce rate from different channels for that page? Why is that? How can we improve on that? There's a, as with anything in, in web marketing, there's a big review process. None of these things work uh, simply by doing them once and uh, leaving them. We always want to improve. That's the whole goal. Since we can measure what we're doing, we need to be improving on what we're doing also. And then also to repurpose the content. There's a lot of great content that's going to be published to your, to your site now, uh, but that doesn't mean it can only be published once. We don't want to duplicate the content, but we can definitely repurpose it. We can use uh, the content that's going into your blog. We can use it in your email marketing campaigns. Uh, we, can, we can publish it out to social media channels. We can repurpose it any number of different ways. To give it a fresh new life, uh, maybe it's a, a, a document that can be updated once a year on the latest trends in your industry, uh, trends in plastic surgery or in any medical procedures or uh, conversations that are taking place. Uh, things that can be updated regularly, repurposed, and resent out to your list. Well, I hope that's been uh, informative for you. Uh, basically, covering content strategy, what goes into it, and really a content, content marketing and an effective content strategy is the future to marketing on the web. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time.